Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage, AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Uh, we're here, getting all the action, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, the keynotes with the new CEO, Adam Selesky, just happened. A lot of action, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, four days. And we love cloud computing because it impacts business. We, we love all that, but when it impacts sports, we love it even more because it can relate to it. You can see we've got two great guests here from the NHL Formula One. We've got David Lohansky, EVP of Business Development and Innovation at the NHL. Rob Smedley, Director of Data Systems at Formula One. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us, me today in theCUBE. Thanks for having us. So obviously Formula One we know is very data driven, pun intended. Uh, NHL has a lot of action going on as well with innovation, streaming, et cetera. Let's get into it. You're both Amazon customers. Rob, we'll start with you. Formula One, big partnership with AWS. What's that about? How are you guys looking at this cloud as you guys go to the next level? Because you're under a lot of pressure with the data from the, from the cars and standards and all that good stuff. What's up, what's going on? Well, I mean, it, you know, it, it started probably four or five years ago with the acquisition of Liberty Media and Formula One. Um, and there was a real drive towards data. There was a real drive towards um, you know, uh, unearthing all of the data that we've got. You know, Formula One arguably probably generates the most data, the most sports data of any sport on the planet. You know, we have car telemetry data, timing data, metadata, image data. You know, we own all the video data and the, and, and, and the audio data of driver radio. Um, tire data, weather data, you put all that together, you got a, you got a, you know, a, a real mass of data and it was just about trying to, to, to unearth that um, yeah. and, and engage the fans more and that's where the partnership with AWS come from. And the, and the competitiveness in Formula One I know is really high and you got a lot of smart people on these teams looking for an edge. And I know it's like, it's a whole new world with data as things get exposed. So I got to ask you, what is your job? I mean, are you there to like to corral the data, to kind of set standards? What's, what's your role? Well, my, my role is essentially to, to, to use the data um, at, at central league level, if you want, for, for, for all the franchises, um, that's all 20 drivers uh, with, within the 10 teams, um, to try to you know, use that data in whatever way possible, whether it's the new car or whether it's the, the, the F1 Insights powered by AWS, um, to try to engage the fans more. You know, we, we, we've understood that data is, is really important to tell the story of Formula One, and it's really important to reach different demographics as well, the younger demographic, demographics, the, young, the Gen Zers, you know, those type of guys. Um, it's really important to get to them because you can, you, you can condense a, an at one hour 45 race down to five minutes, right, which is what <laughs> they want. Um, so this has been a really important step for us and a really important part of that journey has yeah. been the enablement. And I can see the whole eSports thing. I can see after a, 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 a race, okay, now the fans race amongst themselves uh, as, the, as the technology simulation gets better. Only headroom there, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what, well, you know, that, that's, that's probably the next generation of what we want to do with the data is we want to make it much more interactive. We're already giving, you know, through the insights and through, you know, the way that we're, we're, we're trying to tell stories with the different data assets, we're already trying to do that in, in a much more um, proactive way of, of, of telling the story. The next, the next level of that is, is completely immersive, is interactive, and, and that's what we call the 21st driver. So there's 20, there's 20 Formula One drivers, right? But, but we want to build systems using the data and gamification where you can embed yourself and immerse yourself in, that, in, in, in the race as the 21st driver and race against yeah. the other guys on a Sunday afternoon. Awesome, Dave, let's get to the NHL, National Hockey League. You guys are doing a lot of good stuff. You're the EVP of innovation. And what's going on over there? How do you see the cloud helping you guys innovate? What's on your agenda and what's your role? Wow, um, I don't know if we have enough time, but <laughs> at, at, at the highest level, you know, we're trying to expand and enhance the way we produce and present our game to, to the world. Um, you know, our, our sport, um, we have some similarities, but there's a lot of differences based on the uniqueness of the sport. Statistics hadn't really, haven't really been a big part of the National Hockey League and the way people consume the game. Uh, I always say, you know, goaltenders have two statistics that have been used to evaluate them, and they were the same ones that were used to evaluate them back in 1917. So we're almost looking at 100 years where it hasn't really evolved that much. Uh, but we think there's so much there that could really enrich and transform the game. So we're trying to partner with AWS and the best technology companies in the world to figure out how we can start to capture that data and turn it into meaningful content and experiences that allow fans to go a little bit deeper and a little bit broader. Yeah, I can, I can see the data being used for also, you see what the NFL's doing a lot with the safety. Hits are getting harder and faster in the NHL. I mean, the collisions <laughs> are, the equipment, everyone's going faster. That's a big safety issue too, isn't it? Well, there's a safety component too, and, and it, look, that, that is one of the unique things about our sports. Both of ours are speed involved. 
the, the speed though for us, it's not just on the ice, it's also the pace of play, right? So when you have a stoppage, it's typically 10 or 15 seconds long. So there's not a lot of time to integrate data, to tell stories, to build in graphics and visualizations. So the first phase for us is to build a, a tracking system that could capture the, positional, uh, um, the positions of the puck and the players throughout the course of every game. And that's generating a massive amount of new data. Now we're trying to add video to that data so we could start to use it to create entirely new experiences. What, what are you guys thinking about from a fan experience? As you look at the analytics, are, are they interested in more like the, where the puck is, how fast people are going, what are some of the analytics sharing? It really depends, right? So from a fan standpoint, you know, avid fans really want to, they want to go deep and they want to understand controlled zone entries <laughs> and like, you know, things that are really inherent to, you know, the, the, core, the core factors for, for determining outcome. Casual fans, they, they, they like just unknowing speed, right? How fast is the puck moving? How fast is the players moving? Before we had the system, we weren't able to produce it. Before we had AWS, we weren't be able to produce that in real time yeah. and overlay it onto a game. So we could go even deeper when it comes to players and coaches and, and yeah. media partners, but the ability to build a solution that works in real time to give them the data and the video that they can use to tell those stories is, is born from AWS. Yeah, that brings up a great point. I'd love to ask both of you if you can answer this question about the fan experience, expectations. One of the big trends coming out of this reInvent this year as cloud is creating more capabilities, but the users and the consumers have new expectations. They want it on mobile, they want the highlights, they want everything, they want the data, they're data junkies, they want everything, because they're immersing into the, into the experience with multiple touch points. TV, yeah. app, whatever. I think, I think that's right, and I think that it's up to, you know, as, as, as Dave was just saying, the, the, the two sports here with a lot of similarities, and you can see that we're both on the same journey. And, and that's because it's been driven in the end by, by, by the consumers, it's been driven by our customers. And, and I think that now we're on, you know, what I would call the data flywheel, um, where there's a lot of inertia and it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And, and, and this was, if we go back, say, three, four years when we started the partnership with AWS and we started to get really deep into the data and understand, you know, what the objectives of this whole exercise were, um, we always knew that there'd be a point where, where it started to build a lot of momentum and have a lot of inertia. And that's what's happening now. There's a real thirst for it, right? And it's not just, you know, e even the naysayers, you know, e even the people that kind of looked at it and went, well, why are you filling my, my screen with, with, with data? Exactly the same as what Dave says, you know, since, you know, the yeah, yeah. goaltender since 1917, you've used the same two stats to, to, to evaluate that, that particular player. Um, in Formula One, it's been exactly the same. So we started to introduce stuff which had been the same status quo for 70 years. And they say, well, what's all this about? Now, those people can't live without that, yeah. right? It's become, it's become a key part of the, of the broadcast. And it creates new products, like things like Netflix. Who would have thought a, a series would be on, on F Formula One with a, it's like a soap opera for Formula One in behind the scenes, driving to survive has been quite an um, uh, acceleration for a fan base. I mean, techies in Silicon Valley and all around the world have told us like, hey, you know what? That exposes the nerdies of, of Formula One, kind of cool, opens up. So who would have thought? I mean, there's going to be shows on this, yeah. so a whole nother level. I think another, another point to add, it is about increasing your distribution points and getting it, your content out to as many, many, many people as possible through as many platforms as possible. But I think in addition to that, it's really about, and Rob started to touch on this, personalization and customization. What can you do within those platforms to give fans the ability to sort of create their own experience, right? So data, highlights, huge, huge, huge level of importance with I think community is going to be a big part of this too, as you start to see the data creates more interactions and more um, pro progression, if you will. Community, I'm a Bruins fan, I'm in California. Uh, there's not a lot of Bruins fans, mostly Sharks fans, but I got to get online, like, where am I, where's my tribe? I want to hang, not touch on Twitter. Yeah. So there's a whole nother level coming. How do you guys see community developing in your sports? I, th I, think, the, I think the community is, is, is the biggest factor in all of this, right? And, and, and it's kind of bringing together, it, it's a global sports community first and foremost, but then you've got these pockets, so you've got NHL, NFL, you've yeah. got Formula One, and they're all gaining popularity, um, but it's all through really everybody being on this same journey. Everybody's on this same journey of involving tech in the sport, of revolutionizing their particular sport, and it's building this global community. I mean, in Formula One, we've got a billion fans worldwide, but that's growing, it's growing every single year, but it's only growing because we're starting now to get to that younger demographic. Formula One could never get to the demographic. You know, Formula One fans look like us, but now it's starting to the really- The virtualization of the, this hybrid world we're living in opens up the doors for more access. 
Absolutely, yeah, um, and, and I think that's the, the, the key point here, and again, Dave's touched on it, it's the personalization, yeah. it's using data and platforms and packages to personalize somebody's engagement with their particular sport. I got a couple of questions from the fan base I, that was, I knew you guys were coming on, I want to get to you. First, Rob, um, how has F1 been using Amazon and the cloud to develop the new 2022 race car? Well, I mean, it, I, I would say it's, it's no exaggeration to say Amazon technology enabled, was, it was a key enabler in us in his being able to design that 2022 car. You know, we designed it in a virtual environment called computational fluid dynamics. Um, you know, the simulations when we were first running design iterations were taking something like, like, like 40 hours. With, with when we started running it on the EC2, you know, spinning up 7,000 cores, something like that, we got that down to seven hours. Manageable, we designed a whole new car. Awesome. On the NHL, a question here for you is that, okay, how, are, how is the young generation coming into the game? What's changed with the innovation that's impacting how the game's played and how the young guns are coming up? Is there any in technology enabling that? Sure. Um, you know, so we're looking at the type of content that, that younger fans are gravitating to, obviously highlights and condensed games. Um, but we, we talked about it before, the ability to, to see what they want to see with regard to that. So, you know, where we're trying to get to is where, where you could watch a, a game and ultimately decide whether or not you want to turn on a right rail of real-time statistics for your favorite player, for your favorite team, for a specific event, whether or not you want to turn on the ability to network with your friends uh, across social platforms, whether or not you want to turn on a betting functionality, whether or not you want to turn on <laughs> gaming functionality, right? Yeah. So this is how the younger generation really wants to consume the data. <clears throat> it's sort of, they want to see what they want to see, when and how they want to see it. So we're working on that. And then there's everything that goes beyond that, the world of NFTs and VR and AR and yeah. alternate forms of content distribution. Uh, none of that would be capable or, or available if not for the ability to yeah. capture, process, and distribute data and video in an aggregate in yeah. real time. You know, I really think we're onto something so new here, and it, you guys are really kind of illustrating the whole point of how being in person, the old model of physical, I have to go into an arena to watch hockey or go watch Formula One, and hopefully it's on TV, maybe it's got coverage um, here and there. But now with hybrid, you can integrate the experiences from the physical in person where the asset is. Absolutely. And, and to virtual and just open up completely new hybrid use cases. I mean, this is brand new, there's no standards. No, exactly, and that's, and that's something that we're really starting to look at, which is the event of the future. Um, you know, so, so how do you bring, how, how, how do you mismatch, how, how do you bring that whole data experience and that whole broadcast experience to the actual event, the, 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 the live event, and how do you bring the live event <coughs> to somebody's front room? It's the hybrid model, right? And this is, this is definitely next generation of how we're using the data. We're working with AWS, we're calling it event of the future. Um, it's really, really exciting. I mean, you can imagine going there uh, to a Formula One race, you're sat in the stands, you're no longer you yeah. know, watching a car pass every, every few seconds and wondering what's going on. You've now got yeah. AR, VR that you can, you can kind of put up and lay up across what's going on on the track. Well, a lot of people, I'd love to get you guys' reaction to this, this comment, I want to, because this is a big, I see a lot of naysayers out there, because they're so locked into the business model of the physical location. There's a lot of investment, events like this, might be able to buy tickets and show up. So they call it a one-way door here in, in the industry. They don't want to go through that one-way door, but I'm saying that door has already been passed. It's like, you're in. This hybrid world is here. If you don't get out in front of it, you're going to be toast. So the question is, how do you guys think about this when you talk about the business model of experience? Because you have to get in there. I mean, it's not super great right now on virtual. It could be better. It has to get better. So it's a balance. How do you guys talk about that in your, in your respective fields so to educate the potential, I won't well, say naysayers, but yeah, maybe Yeah, no, no, no. So we, we, we believe it wholeheartedly. You know, when you think about the in arena experience, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be in place to be able to deliver those types of, of, of experiences to fans while they're in the building. We wholeheartedly believe that the people who are paying the most to see our game should get the best possible experience. So there should be no replay they don't get. There should be no, any, no game that they can't access, no application that they won't, couldn't have on their phone. But you need to have you know, fairly advanced wireless in arena uh, uh, infrastructures in place. You need to have a lot of uh, uh, cloud infrastructure and services there. So you know, that's why we're, we're leveraging Kinesis and, and SageMaker and AWS Elemental Services to get all of it condensed, operating in the cloud and distributed. So if you're a fan at a game, yeah. there are 18,000 other people like you trying to access a mobile phone to place a bet on a real-time event that just happened, you can actually do it. But a lot needs to go into that. Dave, that's really good insight because what you're pointing out is, is that the physical location is the first party asset. That's the key. You build on that, invest in that, 
and then Take feed it out. it out into the next world and then figure that out. You see, do you agree with that? Absolutely, 100% uh, correct. Well, you know, 100% agree with, with, with everything that Dave's just said. And, and, and we've got probably, you know, an even bigger challenge because we've got these 20 sites where we lift and shift, 20, 23 races, you know, all around the world where we lift and shift um, every couple of weeks. And, and, and they're not arenas either, they're, you know, these are, these are huge, huge sites. Yeah. These, are, these, these are, you know, five, six kilometer um, by five, six kilometer square sites. So, so, so trying to do everything that Dave just said in that space. Yeah, if we just turn air. the lights off well, yeah, it's the, over. He's got to pack it all up. The, the private 5G is going to totally help. You can run drones and have full blanket coverage over the, the, the location. Uh, that's good, that's good stuff. Final question for you guys on data, because I think this is something that we've been kind of talking about on theCUBE over the past year. We see open source software has become a huge success. Do you guys see opening up the data to your fan base? And seeing eSports, for instance, in Formula One is just going crazy. Everyone loves it. It's not there yet with the equipment, having your own car in your living room, but it's close, pretty close, it's there. Um, opening up the data, how do you see that potential? Because there are people who want to maybe code on top of it. How do you guys view that? Well, I think that's, it has to, I mean, Dave again touched on this earlier when he, when, he, when he talked about, you know, the difference between the casual and the avid. The avid, you'll never ever satisfy the avid thirst <laughs> for data, right? They want to do what, what, what I did and sit on a pit wall and, 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 and manage a Grand Prix team. Um, and that's great, you know, we should, it shouldn't just be for a privileged, you know, 10, 20 people in the world to do that. We should be able to give everybody that experience because we have the, the, the technology and the ability and the know-how to be able to do that. And that's where, you know, again, partnership with, 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 with AWS where we're talking about something called the virtual pit wall. So you know the, the, the pit stands where, where it's kind of like the mission control. We want to be able to bring that to the avids and it's just getting deeper and deeper layers where, where you can set up your, your bespoke environment, you can set it up just as if you were a race engineer or a, a team strategist, one of those guys, and you can just get deeper and deeper and then you, you start to lay over that, you start to build your own yeah. models. We bring in simulation into that, uh, in, in, into that whole area and, and you know, it just gets, it's, it's, it's exactly the same as what you have in the teams, you just go deeper and deeper and deeper. What's it like to be on the pit wall there? Manage the team. What's it? Um, what's it? What's scary the sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Nerve wracking. Nerve wracking. I mean, I, I talked about you know the the, the Gen Zers who want the the yeah. uh, you know a two hour race to pass in five minutes. It passes in five minutes because there's so much going on. You know, it's kind of like being the the coach or the. Uh, the you know that that the, the the football manager you know you you're under a lot of pressure you've got to you've got to make the right decisions you've got to you know you've got to make decisions in split seconds everybody's an expert ten seconds after decisions being made it's that type of thing um, but it's great fun you know I can see the virtual Formula One being a total hit because with all the data and now autonomous vehicles you can almost have a collective kind of team approach like swapping out AI in the cars in real time uh, from the virtual pit. Yeah, and again, you know, um, I'm just going to name check Deep Racer because you know AWS Deep Racer. You know, we, we Formula One and, and AWS Deep Racer. We 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 did a, an activation um, about a year back in 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 the first lockdown, in the first COVID lockdown. So we took a couple of Formula One drivers, um, um, Daniel Ricciardo being one of them, and then we built out this Deep Racer platform. And, and, we're, and we're trying to look at how we can bring that more, you know, more together. So you've got the, this, this, this virtual, sorry, this, this, this um, AI car, this autonomous car, and you've got Formula One, and how do we merge those two worlds together? And again, that's just trying to immerse people more in the experience. All right, final question. What's the coolest thing you got going on in each of your respective innovation fields uh, with AWS? What, what would you highlight your favorite innovation or coolest thing you're doing? Oof. Um. Well, I can't tell you about the coolest, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Look, I just think what we're doing with AWS um, with regard to uh, AI ML around data and statistics and analytics, based on what I said earlier, the evolution of statistics and analytics in hockey really hasn't taken hold. We're there now. Um, the ability to really take a game that has, has so much uh, 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 volatility and we're the only professional sports uh, team sport that has personnel changes occurring in live play, so you never really know who's on the ice. And the ability now to deliver real-time graphics and visualizations in the broadcast based on movements that had just played within milliseconds. Um, and, and we're starting to do that today with, with shot and save analytics with AWS. So where that can go in the future um, is really what's probably the most exciting, because it'll totally transform the way fans consume our game. Yeah, NHS always been on the cutting edge uh, on, on the tech, been following you guys for years. Congratulations. Rob, the coolest thing you're working on, from Amazon, that's cool and in Formula One that, uh, that's, that's uh, in your plate right now. Do you know what, I mean there's, there, there's, there's so much going on at the minute. Um, it's really difficult to, to, to choose any one thing. I think the whole, 
partnership. It's everything that that we, that we wanted it to be. That you know, this whole the whole way that we're moving data forward and we're we're revolutionising the sport in a lot of ways. You know, sport has sat still for for a long time, and and to go through that digital transformation. Um, you know, with Amazon and and you know, in, in all the various areas that we're working on, I just think it's all you know, it's it's all really really cool. I mean, it's it's moving forward at such a pace now. If you don't mind me asking why I got you here on the whole data thing, I, I'm just thinking about if I was on a team, I'd be like, okay, it's a whole new wild west. It's this arbitrage of data. We'll get over on the other team. Do you have to watch out? Do you guys talk about like watching teams actually? I mean, it's actually innovative that they can get an edge but an unfair advantage if they actually use the data. Is there like discussion around like who can use the data, which teams? Of course, I mean, you know, when you get down to the franchises, the, the, the each team can only use its individual data. You know, that's where we have key insight up at the league level because we've got, you know, a subset of, 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 of all of the team's data. So we can kind of see everything that's going on. Um, you gotta watch out for the hackers coming in and get that data. No, we're know? all right, we've got pretty good security. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thanks for coming on. I love the sports angle on this. It's really awesome. I think this is a great example of how cloud and digital lifestyle is coming together, the tech integration with the fan experience and the business models are super compelling and I think that's the illustration to just every other business. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate awesome. it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, thank it's theCUBE's coverage here at AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. You're watching the leader in event tech coverage theCUBE. Thanks for watching.